Welcome to ADHD Whiskey, my name is Matt. Today, we have a good old fashioned bourbon skirmish, a one-on-one, -on -one, mano a mano, bourbon versus bourbon. It's like an insanely provocative boxing match that 65 million households would tune into on Netflix had it been on Netflix, but it's not boxing, it's bourbon. And I'm not gonna pull any punches when it comes to telling you which one I prefer more. So without further ado, let's meet the contenders. In one of these glasses, we have the 2024 William LaRue Weller. And in the other glass, the 2024 George T. Stagg. Sazerac sent me the press release telling me that the 2024 Buffalo Trace Antique Collection was going to be released to the public. And by public, I mean not you or me. I then responded to that email begging them for samples. A few days later, bang, boom, pow, check this out. George T. Stagg, William LaRue Weller, in a couple little bottles for this fat feller. I realize that some of you will be upset about this video because you can't get your hands on these. Guess what? Neither can I. Except for last year, I managed to get my hands on a 2023 George T. Stagg, which was really weird because I've never been able to purchase a BTAC bottle before in my life until last year. So maybe this year, it will be your year. And if you do find yourself in a store and they're offering you one or the other, a William LaRue Weller or a George T. Stagg, which one should you buy? That's why I'm making this video, to make your decision easier. If your ass ever gets into a situation where you need to make that decision, chances are you won't. But if you need to, maybe I'll help one single solitary person here. Possibly. They sent me paperwork which was nice. The 2024 William LaRue Weller barrels aged over 12 years on the lower floor of a Rick warehouse at Buffalo Trace Distillery at a barrel entry proof of 114. The antique collection's uncut, unfiltered, weeded recipe bourbon is hand bottled at 125.8 proof and honors W.L. Weller, who pioneered the weeded bourbon recipe. If you want more information on William LaRue Weller, I made a video maybe last year or the year before called Who the Heck is William LaRue Weller? I'll put that right there. You can click on it. This year's George T. Stagg sits at 136.1 proof and is comprised of... Barrels aged more than 15 years and two months. Typically, if you had the option to purchase one or the other, most of the time people would choose the William LaRue Weller, but is that the choice that you should make in 2024? That's why you have a porter. Porter. Glass number one, glass number two. Glass number one. Uh, sweet, creamy strawberries. Like a strawberry, what's it, what is it? A strawberry shortcake? Strawberry shortcake. Very sweet. Very pleasant, very inviting, very yum. A very lovely, sweet, fruity nose. It smells fantastic. Glass number two. Huh. Glass number two is a bit not as sweet. Some darker fruits are on here, like maybe a hay-covered black cherry. Like you were a hunting Buffalo Trace antique collection. Sort of like a needle in a haystack but instead of a needle, you found like a black cherry buried in that bitch. It's like a very hay-like black cherry. Glass number one down the hatch. Wow, that is, wow. That is Buffalo Trace profile amped up to a thousand. It's like a distilled cherry syrup. Not a ton of oak is coming through on the palate, but mostly ultra sweet, ultra fruity, ultra candy-like notes. Nothing even remotely grain related, but weirdly, like I just said, nothing ultra oak related either. To me personally, this doesn't scream 12 to 15 year old bourbon, but it does scream. Second sip. Second sip is much more approachable after your palate acclimates to the high proof. A very oily bubble kind of surrounds the front of the palate and traps all that flavor inside, but then it's only got one way to go and that's towards the back. And as it moves towards the back, it does get a bit bright. It is very alcohol forward with a dash of 
bright barrel on the back of the palette. It is very, very freaking good though. Like super freaking good. Glass number two down the hatch. Wow. Glass number two is much more full flavored and much more full bodied. A ton more oak on here a ton more dark cherry palette on this pour the second glass is surrounding everything it's all encompassing second sip this is like a red fruit medley soaked in to some extra charred oak barrels for so so long and then at some point down the line they introduced a delicious kentucky bourbon whiskey to the mix and all those flavors just congealed and mellowed together and mated they mated they mated hard not for reproductive purposes but mostly for pleasure that is damn good this glass glass number two is like the john jones in this situation and it spinning back kick directly to glass number one. Oh, the and the ground a pound and the ref waves it off because i'm calling a stop to this bourbon skirmish at like four minutes of round number three declaring the winner by knockout due to a spinning back kick to the body glass number two because glass number two does everything you want a premium bourbon to do glass number one is very good but if i were in a situation where i saw these two bottles on a shelf in front of me and i was only able to purchase one of them glass number two every single time without question but there is one question and that question is which bourbon came out on top and the only way to find out is for me to show you and then tell you so glass number two is g george t stag so if i were lucky enough to walk into a store this fall or winter this allocation season and i were offered up these bottles I'm picking the GTS. Would I typically be tempted to purchase a WLW because I've never owned a WLW and I really want a WLW? Absolutely, but after tasting them, I know for sure that I'd make the right choice by picking old George T. Stagg. How does George T. Stagg 2024 compare to last year's George T. Stagg, which I wasn't super impressed with, but ultimately was able to purchase a bottle, which I did, and then, you know, just sipped it throughout the year being somewhat depressed by its lack of quality. How would the 2024 version compare to that? I believe honestly that the 2024 version would kick the shit out of the 2023 version, but that's not for me to say today. That's for me to say in a later bourbon skirmish. How much later? I don't know. Maybe I'll shoot that video immediately after I shoot this video, or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll wait. Maybe I'll wait today. Maybe I'll wait a week. Maybe I'll wait until friggin' 2027 when I'm 43. Shit, I'm old. <sighs> anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. If you find yourself in a store and you're confronted with a problem, which you definitely won't be, pick the GTS and thank me later. Speaking of later, you probably should have hit the subscribe button a long time ago. Hit the thumbs up if you haven't done that yet and leave a comment down below. What was the most surprising bourbon that you were ever offered in a store that you didn't ever expect would be offered to you around retail price? What's your craziest purchase story? I wanna know about it in the comments below. And I might make a video about those comments, like top five best bourbon hunting stories I've ever heard in the comments section of this video. Video. That make a good video. I think it would. My name is Matt. This is ADHD Whiskey. Like I always say, keep your head in the clouds, but your mind on doing things that you don't think you can do great. Great. And by great, I mean, okay, because nobody expects you to do things great that you can't do great. Unless of course you're married, in which case she wants you to do everything fantastic, even though you suck. But even if you rupture your right bicep tendon and you are unable to bowl with that right arm and you choose immediately to start bowling with your left hand because you can't even imagine life without bowling anymore. 
185 today. I bowled a 185 in league with my left hand. And we're moving on up, bitches. Moving on up. Before all is said and done, my left hand, my left arm, which literally feels like it's about to rupture its bicep tendon, is gonna be the shit. It's gonna be a great left arm. It's gonna be the left arm that people will talk about in 50 years. They'll be like, but did you hear about this left arm? Left arm of a bourbon drinker, but not just any bourbon drinker. The world's top whiskey taster. Boy, did he have a left arm, but that's not the full story. That left arm came from nothing.